This is The Civ Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show are these very racy, these very flashy headphones by Thrustmaster, the T-Racing or Thrustmaster Racing Scuderia Ferrari Edition gaming headset. Obviously, these headphones come with the Ferrari branding, and they honestly do look like the kind of headphones you'd see the real Ferrari crew members wearing up on the pit box stands watching the race. They are non-powered headphones designed to be used on all of the major console platforms and the PC for gaming. The Thrustmaster Racing Scuderia Ferrari Edition gaming headset go for $99 and are available in the US through Amazon or Fry's and a handful of other retailers. I've been using these headphones on the show for quite a while actually, and almost every time I'm live, somebody will ask, what headphones are those? When are you gonna review those headphones? Because you know what? They are gorgeous and they're quite noticeable. And they're even better looking when you take a closer look at them. The red of the cups. I mean, that red could be no red on planet Earth other than Ferrari red. And then you have the quality Ferrari emblem or logo on top of that. And then, like I said, they look like the same kind of headphones that the real crew members would be using for Team Ferrari. They are pretty amazing. The outer part of the cups is made of hard plastic that is colored in that red. It's not just paint that'll peel or wear off, it's actually the color of the plastic. On each side of both ear cups is a Ferrari badge. This is an actual emblem, not just a sticker placed on the side. Looking inward or to the inside of the headphones, each ear cup is covered in a very large, cushiony, nearly one inch thick memory foam padding that also has a gel pad layer for added comfort and a black leather feeling covering made of some sort of vinyl. The interior holes are fairly large coming in at one and three quarter inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall and the padding is almost an inch across for good distribution on your head. Inside those cups and under a thin layer of foam over what feels like holes cut in the plastic to protect and allow for sound transfer are the 50 millimeter by two inch sound drivers and the backbone of the headset. Looking to the outside again and at the sides of the red cups are two plastic pivot point connectors that attach to the cups to the cross member that goes across the top of your head. These pivots allow for an amount of adjustment in the camber direction if we compared them to car suspension. The pivots then connect to some metal strips in the form of an arch that lead to a metal pinned pivot allowing for the twisting action or much like the toe in and toe out on a car. This connects the cups to the padded cross brace that starts with a metal spine that matches the lower arches. This metal band has a groove cut out of the middle allowing for the up and down adjustment of the headphone cups. I guess you could say it's like the ride height adjustment of the car. Each headphone can be adjusted about two inches which works well from my size on the small side to a much bigger head. The center part of the headrest is in black and covered in that same very soft leather-ish vinyl. It also has a memory foam center pad and each end is finished off with a plastic piece that allows for the metal arch to slide in and out and then lock down with a silver metal screw. There is a Thrustmaster logo on each side of the plastic adjusters and a tiny little wire running between the cups and through the center pad. On the left ear cup, you have a black plastic knob that Thrustmaster calls a pit style volume knob that does exactly that, adjusts the volume of the headset. And then there is also a removable and adjustable microphone which is unidirectional to avoid background noise. The microphone can be installed and adjusted to fixed angles in relation to the headset and then it also has a flexible wire to get it exactly where you want it. At the bottom of the left cup is the connecting wire that extends five inches before going to a spirally section to prevent breaking of the cord. A foot lower down the cord is the microphone adjuster and a shirt clip. On the adjuster, you can actually adjust the microphone volume level and there is also a mute switch. And from there, there's over six feet more of cord length for a total of over nine feet to work with before you get to the 3.5 millimeter standard computer headphone plugs in green for speakers and pink for microphone. 
When it comes to the setup and installation of a pair of non-powered gaming headset, it really doesn't get much easier. I mean, you take the green plug, you put it in the green hole. You take the pink plug, you put it in the pink hole on your computer, obviously, and it's up and running. I mean, make sure Windows has the right settings for the default or the onboard sound, and you're, you're pretty much done. So let's move on to the comfort. And for me, comfort of a headset really starts with the sizing because I have a small head, to be honest with you. I, and so not all headphones fit me equally. Not all headphones even fit me. So let's talk about the adjustability. On these, you have about two inches of up and down, I, t I mentioned that, in the cup distance on each arm. At the smallest adjustment, these headphones fit rather well. For people with smaller heads or kids, that upper padding might not even touch their head. And for larger people, there is still another two inches per side of adjustment. On the top arch, the padding is thinner than it is on the cups, but that was still plenty to be comfortable for hours of driving. Another plus for me is that my ears fit very easily entirely within the cushioning on the cups, and there's enough surface area and padding to make them very comfortable on my head. The pivot points on the cups, both for the camber and toe adjustment, happen automatically and fits perfectly in that aspect as well. I also really like the idea of a removable microphone. I mean, for those times that you're not going to be using it, why even have it on the headset? And I also like the dual or even triple adjustments that you can make to the microphone. That rotational click to position adjustment holds the microphone perfectly in position and can offer different starting points for adjustment with the flexible wire. And you can even click it all the way down or all the way up out of your way if desired. In the end, I will say this microphone assembly is one of my all-time favorites of any gaming headset that I've ever tested. But that really is about all the adjustments that you have when it comes to a headset, and it did accomplish getting me quite comfortable with it. Now, when it comes to reviewing a headset, or really most audio equipment for that matter, it's really hard for me to do the review. I can't let you hear what I hear, obviously. And in some cases, other products, maybe I can't let you see what I see. But it is very difficult because all I can really do is relay my thoughts on how they actually perform to you. So let's start off with the overall volume. These are the 50 millimeter two inch drivers on a non-powered headset and right there that puts a cap on how loud they are. I will say that I have turned them all the way up to their maximum level and have run many laps at that volume and was perfectly happy but there was no more to call upon if I ever wanted it. The quality of the sound is comparable to other similarly priced headphones that you will use. The high end and mid range sounds are pretty good and have a fair amount of depth and fidelity to them. But some of the low end sounds really start blurring together at high volumes and that can diminish the quality of certain sounds in the game. The overall comfort of the headphones was really good. The over-the-ear cups gave great comfort, and the padding allowed for hours of use without any problems. The adjustment of the headphones allowed them to fit my head snugly and not wiggle around or fall off when moving. The only complaint I had on the comfort side of things is that on hot days, that pleather covering, it caused a little bit of sweating. The microphone on the headset worked really well. Its adjustments allowed for perfect positioning, and it was easy to push out of the way if I needed to. The overall sound quality of the mic, well, from what my friends have told me online, the overall sound quality of the microphone is clear and is overall pretty good. Now, like I said, it's really hard for me to tell you exactly what these headphones sound like. So, I've told you about their abilities, their adjustabilities, their comfort, and all those features, but just to make things perfectly clear as I like to do, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line on the T-Racing Scuderia Edition gaming headset. Starting off with the good, and that being they are a very good looking headset. Ferrari branding, pit box style. One of my favorite gaming microphones. Over the ear cups. Comfortable. Adjustable. USB saver. Extra long cord. 
volume adjustment on the headphone, adjustable and mutable microphone, removable microphone, good sound deadening. And now on to the not so good, starting off with they are not very loud headphones. Low end frequencies blur together. Wiring on headset can catch on things. Wire on headset pulled out of housing. Paying for branding. Pleather covering causes sweat on hot days. And now onto the bottom line. I really love the way Thrustmaster made these headphones look like the real deal. I mean, when it comes to headphones for me, for the most part, what I see is the same thing, headphone after he headphone. For the most part, it's black on black and they're built for audiophiles, that's great. But these are built for gamers. They look the part, they sound the part, and they definitely are branded the part with the Ferrari branding and you gotta love that. And that's part of what made them look like the headphones that real race teams use. It's not just the Ferrari badge, it's not just the color, but the overall shape even screams race team right down to the microphone. And then there are a handful of other features that actually make them perfect for gaming or even more specifically for racing, like the all the way over the ear cups that allow for hours of driving with comfort. And the cups themselves do a good job of canceling outside noise without it being a pair of noise canceling headphones, which I'm not always a fan of. I think there are other features that sim racers will appreciate, like the very easy, very easy to find, easy to access volume knob right there on the cup. In addition to that, you've got the mutable microphone and a microphone volume knob right there on the cord. Again, essentials for sim racing in particular. Another plus for sim racers in particular is the extra long cord. I think we sit a little bit further away from our computers than most gamers, and with that long cord, it's not a problem at all. You'll be able to reach your head comfortably. Now, when it comes to the quality of sound of the Thrustmaster Racing Scuderia Edition gaming headset, the overall sound quality is good, but not great. Now, at 100 bucks, these are not bad headphones, and if you want better sound, it's going to cost you. High quality headphones end up starting at about $150, and they can work their way up into hundreds and hundreds of dollars when you really get into high-end audio. The overall sound quality of these headphones was okay. I mean, if you think of the good and the not so good during the review, I do mention the low end frequency blurring, and that is definitely a factor. But I really don't mention overall quality as a good or not so good aspect of the headphones. I mean, they're about what you'd expect from an $80 set of headphones. The only problem is you spend 100 on these. Now I have to say, until I can replace them with some high-end uh, headphones, until I can afford some high-end ed headphones, these will get the job done, they'll keep me happy, they look great, they do have some great features for sim racing, and they're really easy to use. So, you're just paying 20 bucks for that aspect of them looking super duper cool, and that's probably worth it. I mean, when I'm streaming, everyone mentions those are some cool looking headphones. So that's worth a little value right there. So I hope I've told you everything you want to know about the T-Racing, Thrustmaster Racing, Scuderia Edition gaming headset. I hope I've answered any questions that you might have. You can check it out at their website at thrustmaster.com. They also make a different pair that come in gray that have a Air Force branding instead of racing branding. They're just as cool, basically the same. It's just a matter of whether you want that branding or Ferrari branding. Either one will do for me. I like the Ferrari ones because it looks racing. That's perfect for this show. So that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing. Be sure to thumbs up, thumbs down just to give us an opinion on how we're doing. And that's going to do it for this one. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.